of technology. Don't you just love it? Now, why is that open? All right. Hello, everybody. I see seven of you there. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. And because you're, we're on YouTube, I can actually see your name. So Stephanie Kima, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, another hard one, Sumidha. Sorry, I didn't mean to butcher that like that. But hello, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, Taylor, really good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, We're getting questions already. I just got gifted a ton of cloth diapers and don't know how to use them. I have a lot with snaps. Okay, so probably you want to start by going to the website and clicking the, the little button that says start here. We're going to cover a little bit of an advanced topic today. We're talking, about, although you'll, you'll need to know this too, in order to use your cloth diapers. We're talking about inserts. So there's a ton of different types of inserts that you can get for your cloth diapers. Pretty much... One of the number one questions you'll you'll have as you're looking at them is which one is good, which one do I need, um, can I fit all the inserts and in all of the diapers, that type of thing. So we're going to go over all of that today. I have a little bit of like a mini presentation just so I can keep myself organized and also make it a little bit easier for you guys to tell what I'm talking about rather than me just holding up stuff. So we'll go through that and then after um, I'll go through and take all your questions. We'll do a bit of a QA. and a You can ask me anything. You don't have to ask me about, you know, the insert thing. Although hopefully you have some questions about it following the presentation. So that's my master plan. I don't know how long it will take. I'm hoping it won't take that long. I will try not to ramble. I am very rambly, <laughs> but I will try my best. All right, take a breath, you're good, okay? <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let me share this little thing I made. Um, here we go. So I hope you guys can see that, uh, and it's not too janky. All right, so let me get my screen back. Okay, you can't see my pointer, but that's okay. Um, so, start from the beginning. All right, so, uh, I'm going to go through all of the different types of inserts here, but I do have a worksheet that, like a cheat sheet that you can take and keep with you, because um, obviously I'm going to be going over a lot today, so you won't probably keep all that information. That would be very incredible if you did. Um, so you have the worksheet to keep around and when you're stuffing your diapers or whatnot you can have that. Um, you can get it through the Facebook group or you can get it through email. Um, I'm going to post the links in the description once this video is done so um, come back and get them there or you can type it in as we go right now if you want. Little side note, I have two dogs, <laughs> a French Bulldog and a Pug. So when you hear like the snorting and the nails and all the things, that's them. I apologize, but you're going to hear some weird sounds throughout. <laughs> all right, so grab the worksheet. Um, you can see the worksheet on your screen now. I do hope that it's not backwards since I'm not holding it up. Yes, we're good. Okay, so um, you'll see... I, everything is listed on the worksheet from the fastest absorbing inserts to the slowest absorbing inserts and also from the least absorbent to the most absorbent. So what I mean by that is they can hold the most for that number of layers. So you can see microfiber is at the top and hemp is at the bottom. Two layers of microfiber will absorb really quickly faster than two layers of hemp, but two layers of hemp will hold more liquid than two layers of microfiber. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper later on. So that's kind of why it's in that specific order and we're going to talk about layering a little bit later as well but when you're layering you want to layer your inserts in that order as well. So microfiber is always on top of cotton, bamboo, hemp, all of those. Cotton's always on top of bamboo or hemp and so on. But we'll get back to that. All right, moving along. Dogs. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of inserts. So microfiber is the most common type of insert you're going to find. It's in all of the pocket diaper, most of the pocket diapers that you're going to get, especially the less expensive ones. You're going to get a, a pile of microfiber inserts. Um, oh my god. It's the cat. I also have a cat that's playing with a spring and driving me nuts. I'm sorry. It's a zoo. But at least there's no kids, so there's no screaming. Okay, microfiber. So you'll find it most often. Um, 
What's good about it is it's cheap and plentiful, so again, you get it with all of your inserts. If you want to buy them, although after seeing this presentation, you might not want to. Um, a lot of people don't like it for various reasons. <laughs> um, they're very cheap, so they won't cost you very much, so they're easy to get. Um, they absorb very quickly. So I have this picture in the presentation of the makeup of the fiber. And you, if you've been watching my videos, you probably hear me talk about this almost every single time when microfiber is brought up. The construction of microfiber is that it's made up of very, very thin strands of microfibers, plastic fibers, that are, you know, finer than human hair. And they're all jammed up, as you can see, so that they're open. So the, the construction of it is a bunch of fibers all jammed up to be like this, right? So the reason that microfiber absorbs so quickly is because instead of having to sit on top of the fiber, like you see with the cotton down there, and, and slowly absorb that way, it can fit into the spaces in between the, the construction of the fiber. So it can just go right in there, just like a sponge, really, all the crevices and spaces in a sponge. The problem with that is that, just like a sponge, as soon as you compress that fabric is going to squish out. It's going to shoot out of the, the spaces. So that's why microfiber is really prone to compression leaks. And you can see that's the number one con that I have for microfiber down below. As soon as you get a little bit of pressure from, you know, the car seat belt, the tight onesie, anything like that, you're going to get, you're going to get some compression leaks. So you really, we'll talk about it later, but if you're using microfiber, you really want to have something else underneath it to take what gets compressed out. Um, microfiber is also really bulky. In order to have enough of it to absorb enough liquid, you're going to have to have a lot of layers, and those layers are thicker because of the way that fiber is made up. Um, let me show if I can. So, I think this is bamboo. Amp are hard to tell, but I don't know if you can see it. But just in general, I, and I don't know the layers, so I'm just kind of showing you a random thing here, but you can see that microfiber usually are very, very thick compared to natural fiber inserts like that. And that's just because you need more layers to actually hold something of value. So they're very bulky. The problem with all that bulk, again, once you compress it, it the water comes out. Um, there's also the issue, not everyone here is here for the environment, and I totally get that. If you are, <laughs> if you're one of the, the, the minority, not the minority, if you're one of the ones that are here to help benefit the environment with your cloth diaper use as well, they can be bad for the environment just because it's plastic and because of, again, the way they're constructed, it's very easy when you're washing them for those little bits of microfibers to come off in the wash and your filters and everything like that cannot catch them. So they go right into the waterways. The water treatment plants can't catch those fibers as well. So then you have your little plastic fibers going into the water, all the fishes are eating them, you're eating the fish, so you're eating the plastic, and so on and so on. So bad for the environment that way. Microfiber, again, because it's so uh, so quick absorbing of any moisture, it's, it's very drying to the skin. So that's why we say that microfiber can't go against baby skin, because if it sits there for a while, it's going to draw all the moisture. And if you've ever, like, cleaned with microfiber cloths for any amount of time, you'll know what I'm talking about. Your hands get very dry and picky, like your skin just kind of like gets scaly. It's that it's because it's soaking the, the moisture out so quickly and so it's very irritating to the skin. So you don't want to put this directly on a baby's bottom. You need something on top, whether it be, you know, a fleece liner or this is inside your pocket diaper so the, the lining of the pocket diaper is protecting it can't go directly against the skin just because it's so irritating. It's not it's not going to cause you massive problems, but your baby's probably going to get a rash from it. Um, and harder to wash, again, just because of the way that it, that fiber is made up, it's very hard to get into all those spaces and get all that soil and all the nasties out. So it, it takes a lot more energy. I mean, you really have to wash all of your cloth diapers very, very well but you have to pay special attention to microfiber because it's that much more difficult to get all the dirt out of it. And again, if you've used, you know, microfiber cloths for cleaning and stuff, you'll also know how easy they hold on to like lint and stuff and just everything gets trapped in there and it's very hard to get out. That happens on a smaller level as well with all the bacteria and nasty stuff. 
All right, um, more info about microfiber. I have a full post about that on the website. Um, again, that link will be in the description later as well. Moving down the list, you'll see the next one is bamboo charcoal. So bamboo charcoal are normally gray, like this one's very, it's been washed a few times, so it's got some lint on it. But they're the, they're the gray ones that are like this. Most often, you know, 98% of the time they're gonna be gray like this. Um, a bit misleading, they call themselves bamboo charcoal, but often it's just, as you can see in the picture down there, microfiber wrapped in a dark fleece. Yeah, <laughs> some of these, like um, little helpers, will have actual um, charcoal inside, but it's, it's microfiber wrapped in fleece. So you're getting all of the kind of cons and crappiness of microfiber, the compression leaks, the the fleece on the outside is also synthetic, so you're still getting those microfibers in the water. They're very thick and bulky. Yeah, but it does absorb fairly quickly as well because the fleece is such that it will go in right away and it'll get pulled in by that microfiber inside. So they are very fast absorbing, but these are also normally, this is kind of two bad examples, but normally they're also very much bulkier than a regular micro fleece in micro, yeah, fleece insert. Microfiber insert, sorry, <laughs> but um, they're normally bulkier, so you get more of that kind of bulk and compression problem on these generally. They are usually thicker though, so a lot of people think that they are more absorbent, but you're still pound for pound getting microfiber most of the time. So just a heads up on that. If you are, you know, shopping for microfiber inserts, I would definitely go for bamboo charcoal versus microfiber just because you don't have that you know skin irritation problem um and they're gonna hold more because they're generally thicker so if you're debating between bamboo charcoal or microfiber for the, all the benefits of microfiber and we'll talk about when that's actually you know important later um i would go with bamboo charcoal they're just you know and they don't stain as much because they've got that you know nice fleece cover on them so they're a little bit better than that way they're a step above um, did I miss anything? Don't think so. Again, more information about um, bamboo charcoal versus actual bamboo, which we're going to talk about in a few slides, um, is available at that an address, and I'll have more information in the description below. Moving on. Cotton. Oh, cotton. How I love you. So cotton, and this could be... I have here. Sorry, give me a minute. Let me get some examples. You're most often going to find cotton in pre-folds like this or flour sack towels. Um, this is what, if you see FST around, that's flour sack towels. These are actual kitchen towels that you get in the kitchen aisle of like Walmart and Target and they're 100% cotton, you know, squares of fabric that are just, use them like a flat diaper, which are also most often in, um, except for the stretchy flats, I'm not sure about the stretchy flats, most often in cotton, so the big squares like this, and you know, you fold them up, pin them on baby, throw a cover over them. You can also get cotton inserts. They're, they're a little bit, they're rare, they're more rare than finding cotton like that. Um, and often you'll get the really, really cheap ones. I should have an example here, but I don't. That look like quilts. Be careful with those. Um, be careful with the Gerber um, cotton inserts, their pre-folds and stuff. A lot of times it will be batting on the inside and not 100% cotton. So just be careful that way. But you'll find cotton in all kinds of different things that aren't necessarily cotton inserts. But they they, they are used as inserts, right? Like you can put this in a, in a diaper cover or in a pocket diaper or anything like that. I think that was a bit of a tangent that what I wanted to talk about, but um, why is cotton so amazing? Because it's inexpensive. A pack of flour sack towels will cost you, you know, a couple bucks, and boom, you've got like, I forget how many come in the package normally, like four to six or something for like literally a couple of dollars. Cotton prefolds are super, super cheap. I think the oh so cozy ones I recommend on Amazon currently, price always changes, as we know, I think they're like around $10. For a dozen if I'm not mistaken I could be mistaken you definitely want to check out that but you know compared to buying a whack of hemp inserts or something very inexpensive um, they also wash really easily because again because the way the fiber is made up it's not microfiber it's a woven uh, 
you know, strand of fabric, they wash up really easy, especially when you get into the flower sack towels and the flat diapers where it's like a single layer. It's like washing an old rag. It really is because it is basically a rag. <laughs> Um, can, they can be bulky, um, for the amount of layers you'll need and just the way you normally buy it in like a flower sack towel or a flat diaper or pre-fold, they are, they tend to be on the bulky side, but you do get a lot more absorption compared to microfiber for that bulk and without the compression leaking as much. So, um, yeah, if you have a heavy wetter, you, you may need so many layers that it can be really bulky, especially at night using only cotton if you have a heavy wetter and they're like a toddler, that might not be the way to go just because you'd have to have so much going on in there. It can be really, really bulky, but still worth it. Um, quite, I put often questionable for the environment because there's a lot of, I don't know a whole lot about it. I haven't researched it enough. I really should research it more. Um, but the processing and creation of cotton has a lot of environmental impacts, especially when it's you know done overseas in some of the, the poorer countries. There's a lot of environmental impact there, so if you are concerned about the environment, I would do some research on that first, just because it's very damaging to the environment in the production. I know, I know there's a lot of issues around there. Um, it's susceptible to wear and tear, so again, most often you'll find them in like single single layers and stuff. Um, and just the way cotton is made, it's it you're going to be washing it so much that it can show the wear and tear a little bit quicker than say a bit, well maybe not a bamboo, but definitely quicker than a hemp um, compared to how many times you can wash a hemp insert and how many times you can wash a cotton insert, hemp is going to outlast a thousand percent. So just be aware of that. Um, still on the whole, considering the price difference, you know, that who, who minds really, but just keep it in mind. Um, yeah. So that's cotton and that was, you can see it's kind of like the middle of the road in our list. So it's really, really good absorption. Um, really it's much, much quicker than like a hemp or a bamboo just cause it, it, especially if it's like older, it'll really suck in that liquid really well and it'll hold it there well. All right. And then we get into the true bamboo and I'm saying true bamboo because again, because of the bamboo charcoal inserts that are called bamboo but they're not bamboo at all so this is when I'm talking about bamboo I'm talking about actual inserts made from bamboo plants <laughs> okay um so most often you'll the picture I have down there is just to show you most often you'll find it as like a bamboo terry which is often uh blended with cotton for sure and sometimes it can be blended with a poly but we're talking like a small amount like one two percent type of thing and that's for durability most times um, but there can be a little bit of poly in there. Um, it's what we consider a natural insert, but I just wanted to quote the Federal Trade Commission here says that the soft textiles you see labeled bamboo don't contain any part of the bamboo plant. They are made from bamboo that's been processed into rayon using toxic chemicals. So although we call it a natural insert, it's not, there's not a whole lot of natural there. And I have that as one of the pros because in, in a lot of the other groups you're, you're going to hear them say, oh, if it's bamboo, if it's hemp, you have to wash it, you know, a gazillion times to get all the natural oils out. Bamboo is so heavily processed. It, it does come originally from a plant versus a microfiber that comes from a plastic oil, but it's so heavily processed. There's nothing in there that resembles a natural oil. You're fine. You just have to prop it like a, a regular cotton or microfiber insert by cleaning it but you don't have to wash it a bunch of times which I find is a pro because you are getting all of the absorption and all of the softness and wonderfulness of a natural fiber insert but you don't have to wash it a million times like you do with hemp which we'll talk about in the next slide. Um, very very absorbent, very soft, love it. It is a little bit more expensive than you know your cotton flower sack towels or pre-folds of course but pound for pound you're going to get a whole lot more absorption there and yeah it's worth it that way especially if you have a heavy wetter and you're worried or if you want something to boost um your cotton or something else you can get a nice booster that's um and we'll talk about the definitions below you'll get a nice booster that's very very thin but you still get all of that absorption in there so it's just great that way um often does need to be paired with ever other inserts especially if it's like a, a non-terry bamboo if it's like a real bamboo like an amp insert um you'll definitely want to pair it with something else as well 
Um, it's often sold thin, um, just something to keep in mind. So we're going to talk about layers later, but you do have to keep in mind of how many layers each insert is made of, and you'll notice that, you know, bamboo inserts are not a whole lot of layers. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, maybe, okay, I think I covered all of that. All right, let's move along. <laughs> Hemp, I like slides, it keeps me on point. <laughs> Versus all rambly. Okay, Hemp. This is the workhorse of the cloth diaper insert. I don't know what to say, I wanna say genre, that's not right. <laughs> insert world. Um, very, very absorbent. Pound for pound, they're going to give you, they're gonna hold more in there than any other fiber. Um, they get more absorbent over time. So just the way, I should have pulled up a picture, just the way that hemp is construction, constructed, sorry. Um, it, it's like, it's a smooth fiber, just like you would get with a cotton or whatever, but it tends to like break a little every time it's washed and those little breaks hold the liquid. It's not like microfiber, it's just random cuts and breaks. And every time you wash that hemp insert, it's very durable. I should have put that as a pro as well very very durable fabric and just every time it gets washed it just kind of gets it does get a little bit softer but it gets more absorbent and it just it gets lovelier it works better every time part of that is that it does have those natural oils in it so any hemp fabric is going to be coated in that kind of natural oil that you do need to wash them several times in order for them to reach their full absorbency so if you're buying brand new hemp inserts, wash them three, four times for sure before you start using them. And, you know, as you keep washing them, they're going to get more and more absorbent over time. And they lock that wetness in. Um, they are more expensive than most of the other in inserts, um, especially if you're going for a thicker and truer, because most hemp inserts will also be blended with cotton. But the more hemp that's involved, the more expensive the insert generally um, so they can be get expensive that way. Um, what are the other cons? Must be washed several times and need to be paired. Yes. And also because of that natural oils and that type of thing, trying to get that out over time, you do want to normally pair them with something a little bit faster absorbing. So if it, there's not a lot of cotton into the hemp insert, if you're getting a true hemp insert that's, you know, mostly hemp and not really blended, you do want to make sure that you're putting something on top just to pull that liquid in um, quicker. But we'll cover the layering in a minute. So that's hemp. Love hemp. Couldn't have cloth diapered my daughter without hemp. Hemp is the bomb especially if you have a heavy wetter, and especially overnight. If you look on all of my uh, recommendations for overnights and all my recommendations for heavy wetters, hemp fitted overnight diapers are like the bulletproof solution for overnight, so hemp all the way for that. Um, I also tend to mention Zorb. Uh, I have two here. Um, Zorb is that like dimply uh, fabric that you see all over. I have the pictures there. Um, it's very uncommon right now. It used to be produced um, by a few cloth diaper makers into um, fitted like this and inserts. Bummies, which was like a cloth diaper company that was around forever, used to sell uh, uh, Zorb inserts. If you can get your hands on them nowadays, like use, grab them. Um, but mostly this is for the people who want to make their own cloth diapers. You can buy Zorb. It's hard to get. You can only buy it through Wazoodle is the company that makes it. Or I think they sell through Amazon as well and that type of thing. Um, but if you're making your own cloth diapers, Zorb is definitely something to consider. Just because it's it's just lovely. It's mostly cotton blend, but it's blended with the, the other natural fibers. The construction of it makes it very fast absorbing, so you get all of that natural fiber holding of liquid, but it's also very quick. Um, the way it's constructed, it lets solids and stuff come off very easily. It's just a wonderful fabric if you're making your own inserts. Very, very absorbent. Um, but yeah, it's really, it's not for everybody. It's really for DIY diapers nowadays. Um, and more information about that, I have a full article where I interviewed the people from Zorb and they give me um, some information and links on the different types because there's like Zorb 2D, 3D, 4D, and, and so on. And they kind of told me which is better if you're making cloth diapers and that type of thing. So check that article out if that's something that interests you. And I'll put that link in the description as well. 
moving along. Mastering absorbency. <laughs> so the number one thing when choosing, um, apart from the fabrics and deciding, you know, what you need, you also want to have enough. So biggest mistake, biggest mistake I definitely made in the beginning when I started cloth diapering my daughter is not using enough inserts. After, you know, the three month mark newborn stage, you are going to need more than one insert. You're quickly probably going to need more than two. You want to make sure you have enough absorbency in there and you kind of go by your baby how much they're wetting, how much they need. If you have any leaks of any kind and the, the inserts are soaked through and you know you change that diaper, you know, as soon as they wet, you definitely, that's your key that you need more absorption in there. So you either need to put more inserts in or maybe change up the type of insert you're using. So making sure that you have enough inserts for your baby. Um, and again, don't forget all about the layers. So you might have, you know, four inserts in there, but they're all two layer inserts. That's going to be less than, you know, a f couple of fives. You know, I'm not mathing in my head right now, but you know what I'm saying? The layers count. So make sure that you're counting the layers. And you know, a ton of layers of microfiber are going to hold more than two layers of hemp. It's not only about the fabric, it's also about how much is in there. Um, a few situations where you're going to need more absorbency than usual, definitely at nighttime, that's kind of a given <laughs> because you're not wanting to change the diaper every wedding. So of course you need enough to hold everything in there for the whole night. And a lot of babies, they're, they're kind of, they kind of hold on to it <laughs> during the day and then all of it comes out at night. So you really need a lot of absorption at nighttime and that's where those hemp fitteds really come into play. If you have a heavy wetter who wets heavily all the time, then you have to adjust for that and you have to keep adding more inserts or more to better types of inserts. Um, and then there's two growth spurts that I always talk about. So you're gonna be cruising along, you might be using one insert during the newborn stage, three months is gonna hit and you're gonna need two for sure. And then you're kind of cruising along, cruising along, and you've got this thing down, everything's good, and then all of a sudden they start leaking around the eight, nine month mark. That's because of absorbency. Their output, they've started slowing down on how many times they're wetting and they're putting out more. They're drinking more, you know, the bladders are bigger, they're holding onto it for longer, they're putting it all out at once. That's where you're really going to need to bump up that absorbency. So expect that around eight, nine months. And again, that happens around the, the toddler time, so like 12, 18 months. They're going to be busy, busy, they're going to wet less, but wet more, and their bladders again are bigger, so expect that bump up around that time frame as well. It's always when it kind of happens, it's just kind of when it happens. <laughs> um, and then make sure you have the right kind of absorption for your situation. So we already talked about overnight, um, heavy wetters, um, long trips, if you're going on a long car trip and you know, you you're not going to be able to hit those those stops along the way. You want to make sure that you have a lot of absorbency there just so you can get to the next road stop, right? Like it makes sense. Or if you're on an airplane and all the bathrooms are closed or... Yeah, I did take my tra my daughter on an airplane. I don't remember changing her. Maybe I just avoided that. <laughs> I'm not sure. But yeah, just plan, plan ahead and make sure that you have, um, you know, higher capacity or enough absorbency in there. Um... Yeah, more capacity. So that's where I'd, I'd say think more about the, you know, the natural fiber inserts will get you the the less, especially for the car trips, the less, the least bulk, for but the more holding power, right? Um, situations where you might, might need more speed. So this is where you might consider buying microfiber inserts, actually, even though, you know, we know all the cons, but we might still need them sometimes. Um, side sleepers, bum in the air, crazy sleepers, where they're wetting and it's not being it's not able to distribute very fast along the diaper. You know, you might have that hemp um, in there, but they're, they're kind of, they're in a position where it's just gonna come and rest against the like side of their leg or something. You might need something that's really fast absorbing like a microfiber or a bamboo in there just to like draw the liquid out over a period of time so that it can be sucked in throughout the entire diaper. So think about that. Um, if you're getting leaks, you know, around in weird places, like if you're getting leaks out of the top of the diaper or the side of the diaper and your fit is fine, start looking at absorption um, speed. Um, it's very, very rare. We talk about heavy wetters a lot, but in rare, again, rare, don't jump to the conclusion that this is your problem, first thing, but 
occasionally a baby can be what I call a flutter. So they just kind of, they hold it, hold it, hold it and then whoosh, they're like the power <laughs> of letting it go is really, really high. And it kind of, it goes into the diaper so fast that it will come out the, the sides or the top or wherever, especially if the, the leak, the fit is not very good. But again, with, even with a good fitting diaper, they're, they're wetting so fast and with such force. Think about, um, the newborn poops, right? Think about the force of those and how they can come out of like a disposable diaper, especially. Just the force of things, you sometimes need something that's a bit faster absorbing. Um, and situations where compression leaks are more common and you might want to get rid of the microfiber altogether. Anything where there's a strap or like restriction. So booster seats, car seats, uh, high chairs, all of those uh, tight clothing, all of those situations are going to increase the likelihood that you're going to get a compression leak if all you have in there is microfiber, right? So just adjust your absorbency and the type of absorbency and how much for the situation. Um, I hope that helps a little bit. <laughs> Um, so again, you do not have to remember all of this. I do have the cheat sheet for you. Um, and that's where you can get it. Um, when all of this is over, I'll put the actual links into the description. Um, yeah, so keep that on hand and you'll know how to layer and you'll know everything that I've talked about <laughs> today. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, so that's my presentation. I'm going to take a drink because, whoo, my jaw. And let's see what you guys are saying. Can I put this doc somewhere? Yep, it is in, if you're a part of the Facebook group, go into the group files, um, or I can also send it to you by email, which um, I'll put that link down below as well. Can I put it in the, let me see if I can just copy. Did that work? Okay, so there you go. That's how you can get it by email. I will put it in the description still as well, but here's the links coming if you want them. There you go. <laughs> that was easy. I could have just done that in the beginning and I could have done that the whole way. We're learning here, people. We're all learning. Okay, let me... I'll keep that up, I guess. I'll keep that up for now. And if anybody has any questions, I will answer them now. It does not have to be about this. I feel like I exhausted this topic, but if you do have a question about it, for sure uh, ask. Um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Technology seems to be reminding us of weirdness this week. Yes, agreed. Though I won't lie, I was a little bit happy that Facebook was down yesterday. I was like, okay, I don't have to do that. <laughs> One last thing on my list. I wasn't too sad about it. I don't want it to be down forever, but once in a while, not so bad. <laughs> um, first time, mom, and loved your video about types. Of, oh, thank you about types of cloth diapers, and it was the best on the. Oh, thank you. I was just doing some research on inserts, and your live came up. Ah, oh, perfect timing. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for those kind words too. You're very sweet. Um, love the worksheet. Perfect. Have 30 inserts. Not sure the type. They are a thick rectangular shape and feels like a towel. This is from Kiman. Again, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that right. I'm not very good at names. <laughs> um, I'd have to see them. 30. Okay. So when you feel them, it, this is, this is hard when you get a bunch of used inserts kind of, especially if you're not used to them, right? You don't know what they are. Feel them. And if you have any microfiber cloths, take one of those out and feel that as well. That'll, that'll be the, the top way because you're going to feel how it kind of like, it's, it's not the softest and it kind of dries your hands out almost. You know what I'm saying? Like they're very, they're very drying to the skin almost right away. Um, that's going to be microfiber. Look for tags. A lot of them have tags, but they're hard to decipher. If it looks like a towel and it's very, very, very soft... It's probably bamboo terry, but again, I'd have to see it. If you want, if you're a part of a member of the group, take a really close up shot of your inserts and put them online. And most people will be able to, most experienced cloth diapering people that are in the group will be able to, you know, answer you. If not me, if I'm not in there, you'll get an answer. And people can generally, sometimes you'll even get the brand <laughs> and the like, the link to the actual insert. So try that out if you're a member of the group. Um, Sounds like my favorite, yeah. 
I use flip flower sack towels almost exclusively and love them. A lot of people do. They're really, they're catching on popularity. And you know what? For the price, you cannot go wrong. And you could do so many things with them. Like if you're paying a couple of bucks for a giant pack of flower sack towels, who cares if you want to cut them up, right? Like it doesn't matter. They're, they're great. I love them too. Um, thoughts on La Petite Ours pockets and all in one. I have not put them to the test myself or had any of my moms officially test them but I know a, a few I think I think at least one of our admins uses them one of my reviewing moms uses them and I've heard nothing but good things so far but I can't give you like specific information again if you're a part of the group post in there and and that's where you're gonna get uh, really good you know feedback on individual diapers like that my daughter pees through microfibers just like it's a napkin yep <laughs> unfortunately I mean, they're, they're great to start out with. They're going to get you through that first three months, probably. But after that, it's very hard to make them work for most kiddos. You need, you're going to need to supplement with something else. Uh, I just realized that I accidentally rewinded and was watching Recap Not the Live. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Disney. I don't know. <laughs> Technology today and yesterday have not been our friends. Let's just say that. Um, anybody else? Hello, can you give recommendations on where to start? This is from Amy. Um, hi, Amy. <laughs> can you give recommendations on where to start? Newborn due in the next week and a little overwhelmed which layers to begin with. Yes. So don't freak out too much in the newborn stage. You're going to be changing diapers. I mean, I'm not sure if this is your first baby or not. But if it is, um, you're going to be changing diapers so often that they're not going to get through that insert <laughs> very much just because you know their bladders are so so tiny and you're changing so often it's not really something you have to think about until they get a little bit older and they start sleeping a little bit longer stretches that type of thing um so don't sweat it too much in the beginning but you cannot go wrong with natural fibers um if you're buying new inserts i always recommend starting by buying the cotton and further down the list right just yeah you can always get cheap microfiber anywhere if and I didn't mention that if you if you are fine later on that you need something faster absorbing because of the situations that we talked about you can always go and get um like a microfiber cloth or something that you know I wouldn't get one at the dollar store but you know get one that you know is not going to be toxic or anything but you can get like a cheap microfiber cloth and just lay that in right under a fleece cover because you can't put it against the skin but you can always get cheap microfiber is what I'm saying basically whereas if you start building your stash with the good stuff you won't have to worry about it probably so much later on um and as far as newborn I cannot recommend enough getting do I have one here I usually have one here um I guess I don't poop um, this is a larger size, but newborn prefolds, newborn cotton prefolds are fantastic because there's, they're smaller. They're like about, what can I, here's a, a highlighter for size. They're going to be about like that long. They're going to fit a newborn diaper really well. You can put them in a cover. You can put them in a pocket diaper. You can put them in anything. And later on, you can use them as boosters because they're so tiny, they're going to fit in anything. I was using newborn prefolds when my daughter was wearing training pants because I would put them in some of the pockets of the training pants to boost them. You're going to use them like your whole cloth diapering time. Newborn prefolds are where it's at if you want to invest in something. And they're cotton. Most of the time, you can get, you can get some bamboo ones now as well. And some hemp if you go the higher up, like thirsties. Um... Joined late, so if I missed this, sorry. What is your suggestion for the trimmest, most absorbent, curly, using pockets, flower sack towels inside, and he's leaking like always. Oh, poor you. Um, sorry you're going through that. Um, you're not alone. Everyone gets leaks at some point or another. So just put it there. You, they can be fixed. <laughs> um, so trimmest and most absorbent, hemp, 100%. So that's exactly why we went down that list. As you go down the, the list here, is it? Yeah, it's still on the screen. Um, as you go further down the list, you're going to get it's every insert is going to hold more for the layers that you're getting. Like their hemp is going to be a lot thinner than a microfiber and it's going to hold a lot more. So definitely hemp bamboo is where you want to live if that's where you're getting a lot of leaks and you need something a bit trimmer because flower sack towels can be a bit bulky, especially if you need so much because you're 
it's a heavy wetter, right? They can get quite bulky real fast. Um, same question as Amy. My daughter, my daughter, this is from Kayla. Hi, Kayla. My daughter, it's like red skin irritation from microfiber when it's in her pocket diapers. What do you think it could be? Hmm. It could be a lot of things. There's a lot of things that can cause a diaper rash to look like just a mild diaper rash. It can be just moisture against the skin, um, trying to catch those diapers when they're they're wet faster. So, you know, doing the squish test when the diaper is on, you don't have to stick your whole hand in there. When the diaper is on, you just kind of, you take it and kind of squish here and you're gonna slowly start to get the feel. When it's stiff, that means it's wet. So you change it more often to make sure that moisture is out of there. You can try, although you're using pocket diapers, so that kind of normally has a micro suede or a micro fleece on it. You, so you wouldn't, the benefits of a fleece liner wouldn't really be all that much, but you can try it. Um, adding a fleece liner on top kind of keeps some of the moisture away from the skin. Um, using a barrier cream, uh, cloth diaper friendly um, cream at every change. Using cornstarch at every change I find very helpful. Um, after that, you're getting into the kind of more complicated things, and it could be a ton of things. Um, there is a post on the website. I'll put it in the description. Or maybe I can pull it up here. Ah, that's fine. I'll put it. I'm just going to delay things. I'll put it in the description below, um, kind of the things that you can look for for a cloth diaper rash kind of process of elimination because it could be so many things, like so many things. So I'll put that below. But most commonly, the most common cause of it will just be moisture against the skin. It could be, and I'm just going to throw that out there, but don't, it's very rare, just like a lot of things. It's very rare, but it could be a sensitivity to synthetic fabrics. So not only the microfiber inserts, which you are putting inside your pocket, so that's not a problem. But like the micro suede and micro fleece, it can be a sensitivity to that. Um, some babies have to use those natural fibers just because of that sensitivity. But I would look to moisture first before I jump to that conclusion. And do through process of elimination because it's so rare that they have an allergy to that. Um, he's starting to move and I'm so frustrated. Yep. It's like they're continually just trying to murder themselves. They're literally just running into different forms of danger. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I need to switch my my stats to pre-flats? Your stats, your flats to pre-flats. It's up to you. Um, how are you putting them on? Are you like snapping them on him or just laying them in? If you're just laying them in, that's a big problem I found. If you're just laying in your inserts. So what I'm talking about is when you have flats or pre full this is not a good example. So she's using a diaper cover, which is like the, the shiny inside. When you're using a, a flat or, I, my, I messed up my flat, but pretend this is a flat piece of fabric folded into a rectangle. If you're just laying it in there, the movement can kind of get a lot. So it might be better to like do an, a funky fold and use a snappy or pins or something to pin it onto baby. That will help with the movement a little bit. A lot of people like the stretchy flats just for that. They're much thinner and they can you know, conform to baby a bit better. Try it. Try it. <laughs> I'm so glad I joined this even at the end. I was wondering why my 19 month old just pees so much at night. But this daytime I can actually use two microfiber. Yet yeah, for sure. Especially around 19 months. That's when you're getting into the, the hard times. <laughs> um, yeah, if I wouldn't, if, at 19 months I wouldn't bother. Hmm, it depends how big he is. If he's like a tiny guy then you can look into some overnight diapers, but at 19 months, I might start looking at bedwetting pants. Let me go into the bathroom that's right beside me randomly and just grab one. <laughs> So my daughter's still in these. That's why they're in the bathroom. Um, so my absolute favorite, I've tried so many bedwetting pants. So many bedwetting pants. And they either fall apart or leak or by far, if you're going to invest in bedwetting pants, um, get these guys. This is the size, is this size smaller? Did I cut the tag out? I can't remember. I have a full review on these um, where I talk about all the things. Um, but... For 19 months, if he's like average size, he's not like on the lower end of the curve and whatnot, um, you can buy them if even if he's a little bit under the weight and they're pull-up style, so you can use them for a really long time and they hold a ton. 
They are so good. They hold so much. I've never had a leak in them. This one is... I want to say three and a half years old and we're still wearing it. She's over the weight limit for these, but we're still wearing them. That's another issue why my daughter can't wake up at night to go to the washroom. You will not be using them for this long, but I'm just saying that because they hold up. So at around 19 months, if you're starting the whole potty training adventure and everything, I would go for something like that at night just because it will last you through and it will help you with the nighttime training as well if your son is not like my daughter. <laughs> um... But yeah, that's why. Could you please tell me what are cloth diaper inserts? So inserts are all of these things. They can be, you know, the flat, we call the flat diapers inserts sometimes to the pre-folds, all of the kind of like rectangular stuff like this that you're going to use to absorb in the diaper. So every diaper, no matter what kind it is, is made up of two parts. It's made up of an outside that is water resistant. So that's what's gonna keep all of the mess inside and keep it off of your couch and everything and a waterproof, in, or sorry, a water absorbing, mess absorbing inside that goes inside of it. The, the inside, the absorbent part, are what we call the inserts. Um, thank you, baby. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Amy, for saying that. Uh, I've been using one size diapers but feel like my baby is growing out of them. I can see the top of his butt, the fizzy bends over. Do so you have any recommendations for larger size diaper covers? Don't panic yet. I don't know how old your baby is, but if he's under, like, 18 months, don't panic. Don't panic. Especially if he hasn't started walking yet. A lot of babies will kind of max out the diaper. This can happen, like, around 10, 11, 12 months. But kind of, they're if they're chunky and they're big and they're you're like, oh my god, they're going to grow out of this diaper... Babies change all the time. He's going to change shape. He's going to, you know, as he walks, as he grows, he's going to start lengthening. And you're going to, you might even come down on that rise. If, if, if he's not, you know, beyond the toddler stage, don't worry about it yet. He's probably going to grow and change. You don't have to panic about it yet. If he is like older, like 18, 19, 20 months, and you're thinking, okay, he's still really big. He's walking, he's been walking for, you know, six months, but he's still really chunky. And I feel like he's getting out of these diapers then you can start looking into the the higher ones you're going to want to look into the north american brands for that so like your apple cheeks your thirsties your your mother eases those types of diapers those are where you're going to find the next sizing you're not going to find them so much in like the 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 lower end diapers and you're going to want to look at higher absorbing stuff because he's going to be a lot older right so you want to look definitely at the natural fiber stuff and you might want to look into the pull-up stuff and that type of thing but if he's younger and you're just kind of maxing out your snaps and you're worrying that way don't you're gonna make it till that 35 pound mark around at least toddlerhood so don't panic yet trust me <laughs> um if hemp is late absorbing can i use it alone for a newborn or do i need to layer it with cotton on top or microfiber for a newborn my main hesitation would be those poops, right? So especially if you're breastfeeding, I don't know why it's more when you're breastfeeding, but those explosive kind of bleh, poops, right? I, I would want something a little bit faster in there. If you're using a, um, a pocket diaper or like an all-in-one, like most newborn diapers are, you don't really have to worry about that because it's going to have like a fleece on top. And again, they're wetting so little that you wouldn't have to worry too much about that. Um, but it would be the poop that would scare me just because it's so liquidy and it's so much and it's so powerful so yeah I would I would maybe I would maybe layer something on top of that um at least like a cotton um I just started cloth diapering my daughter now I've been noticing her getting a smell an issue we never had with disposables I changed them about every two hours could there be another cause could be a lot of things um what kind of, I know it sounds weird but what kind of smell are we talking about? Are we talking like an ammonia smell? Like if you smell a bottle of Windex or, and it like burns your eyeballs and your like nose hairs are singeing, that kind of smell? Or is it like a dirty farm smell? Those two types of things will kind of lead me in different directions. So hit me back with more information, okay? Um, yes, my toddler used two flower sack towels and it was very bulky for a while. But with more washes, they have trimmed down. That's, yeah, cotton shrinks, right? So that's that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Um, cotton will shrink and and get a little bit more absorbent over time as well. Um, thank you so much. I have to check 
out now, but this was so informative. Love this group. Thank you, Stephanie. That was really sweet of you to say. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, my son is two years old and he's a heavy wetter, 39 pounds. What would you recommend for his nighttime diaper? Two years old and a heavy wetter, 39 pounds. Definitely these guys. Definitely the, the mother ease. Um, they are a pull up, um, but at two years old, you're probably wanting to start that whole thing anyway. Um, if he's super, super tiny, you might have a problem fitting in these, but they will fit. Un like I bought them when she was good five, six pounds under the, the weight. The, because of the way they're made, the, the elastic just fits so, so snugly, whereas it didn't on the other ones. That's why I, 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 I'm not an affiliate. I should say I'm not an affiliate for Mother Ease. They don't, they've never sponsored me. I've paid for all of these. Like just, they, they're so helpful. They are what I recommend. They are not the cheapest thing. They, these are, I'm Canada. So they're about $35 Canadian. So I would imagine that would be like $30 US. But again, I've been using this one for three and a half years. So you can definitely use them on more than one kiddo and they're gonna last you forever. And you can use them at uh, below the weight range and above the weight range. So you don't have to worry about that and compare it to a box of uh, overnight pull-ups that's gonna last you, what, like a month? So <laughs> a month of disposables for one, they're worth it. I would go to this just because they hold so, so, so much um, versus you could, you could do it with a fitted too, but these are going to hold more. I think these hold, oh, I'm guessing now, but I want to say 24 ounces. Like they're bulletproof. They're not, you're not going to, you're not going to blow through that one. Um, my six year old's wearing them. Let's put it that way. Um, it's been both smells actually. Last week it was more stronger ammonia type smell. So I stopped for a few days, started up again Sunday. And now it's just nasty, dirty type of smell. Okay. Um, so I'd want to check, first of all, for detergent, just because that's the most likely cause, especially when you have some ammonia. So you're going to get a bowl of warm water. Um, take a clean and dry insert just like this, and you're going to put it in the bowl of water. You're going to kind of swoosh it around, let it sit for a minute, swoosh it around some more, and see if you get any suds or like film on top of the water. If that's the case, it's probably just using too much detergent. Um, you're going to want to rinse that detergent away and um, kind of reevaluate your, your wash routine. Um, just make sure you're not using too much too little for your load size, for how many diapers you're washing, um, your water type, etc. I can put more info about how to wash your cloth diapers the, using the measure method below. So you're literally measuring everything and making sure you're getting that ratio right. Um, but yeah, that, do the swish test first. See if that's what you're dealing with. If that's not what you're dealing with, then it could be too little detergent if you're getting the barnyard smell. Like it's, it's weird that you would have both. Um, unless something is going on internally with kiddo that's causing an ammonia smell and you have a barnyard issue. So ammonia smell can be a lot of different things. It can be, you know, dehydration at night. It can be um, just, you know, long sleeping periods where he they wet in the beginning of the night and that, you know, hot, humid, sticky condition kind of, because all urine eventually over about a 24 hour period will turn into ammonia. Um, but if it's like, doing it right away it could be just like a dehydration thing it could be a certain medical things will also cause that um so it could be that going on and then you also have a barnyard smell which is when you have like a dirty diaper ick smell it's just that they're not getting clean so you know check that you're using enough detergent and check that you're you know doing more than one wash and that type of thing when I say more than one wash I am not saying two washes with detergent I'm just saying making sure that you're doing like a pre-rinse and then your wash, measuring everything for your laundry. It's hard to say. I would, first things first, do that swish test, see if it's a detergent thing. If there's no detergent or anything in there, check, um, check, make sure, maybe a lot of liquids, maybe check with your um, pediatrician and also just, you know, check your, your wash routine, make sure that's on point. Um, yeah, that's where I would go first. And then you can kind of look into more things after that. Um, where can I get those? These are Mother Ease. Um, I have like a bunch of links of where to get them all over um, in the my review. So as soon as this video is done, I'm gonna drop all the links in the description. So check back for that. And I will have a direct links for you there. Um, they're magical. You can, I think you can get them on the US 
Amazon, but you can get them through the Mother Ease website as well. It's a brand of cloth diapers. Mother, one word, Ease, E-A-S-E, -E, if you want to Google. I took her to the pediatrician and they said that they didn't sense any issues. That's why I assumed it was the diapers. The detergent makes more sense though. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I can, I can drop a link. <laughs> I have links to everything. I can drop a link to um, my article that kind of leads you through all the different kind of smells and, you know, what to check for in descending order. A um, little bit quicker, a little bit better to go through that than rely on my brain <laughs> on the spot like this. So that's why I'm always like, oh, I have an article. It, I'm more thoughtful in the article than I am here. <laughs> Ah, that makes sense. All right, I think I answered all the questions. If you have any more, drop them now and I'll keep talking. <laughs> I always feel like I'm losing my voice at the end of this and it's about the hour mark. That's about when I'm like, start to get crackly and sound like a teenage boy. That's not how a teenage boy sounds, but you know what I'm saying. I love you guys for coming on here and indulging me, <laughs> listening to my spiel and answering, asking such great questions great question wait such great questions it's really it's pretty awesome that I get to do this and you guys come and talk cloth diapers with me because I'm the crazy lady who knows way too much about cloth diapers so it's very nice to share that with some other people who are interested thank you guys I appreciate it all right close this guy so I can actually make sure I've answered everything I think that's it. All right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Again, I'm going to drop all those links in the bottom. Um, this will live on a page as well about all the insert stuff. Um, I'm writing it out in full form. In article form, um, I will put the, this video and also the PowerPoint if that's helpful. I don't know. Um, and the link to get the, the cheat sheet into an article. When that's all ready after the video processing and all that kind of stuff, I will drop that link in the description as well. So check there quick um, later on and everything will be in there. Could it be detergent I'm using? I had another lady suggest, sorry, one more question just popped up. Could it be the detergent I'm using? I had another lady suggest one to me. My water hardness was 100, very soft. So she told me no softener, absolutely no softener. And recommended equals liquid scent free detergent. So equals liquid scent free detergent it is on the weaker side, but I believe without seeing the ingredients list, I believe it still has cervicants in there, which is the main thing that you want. No, it's fine, just you don't worry. I appreciate the questions, it's totally cool. Um uh sorry, I'd I'd want to see the the ingredients again, but I'm pretty sure that it has a cervicant in there, but it is a coconut oil-based cervicant, so it is on the weaker side. So it's possible it's the detergent. Just my I've I've looked at it before and I can't remember what I saw on the bottle. That's what's bothering me. But I do know it wasn't one of my my top picks because of I think it was mostly coconut oil based. Normally detergent makers are smart enough not to only put the coconut oil based ones. So I'm going to say it's fine. I but that's tough. It depends on how much you're using and I'd have to see the ingredients list. Sorry, I know that's not helpful at all. It could be the detergent. Um but with your water being so soft, I don't jump there automatically. Um, so I'm going to put the link to the article that has all the information about how to do the measure method. If you hit me back, either, I don't know if you're a member of the Facebook group, but if you hit me back on the group or, uh, by email, my email is clothdiapersforbeginners at gmail.com, clothdiapers at beginners, all written out at gmail.com. Hit me back with the information that I would need. So I would need to know how many diapers you're washing. Um, maybe hit me back with the ingredients list on the equals just because I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, you, you already told me your water, tell me again your water softness because I'm probably not going to remember from here. Um, and the size of your washing machine. I know that sounds really complicated, but you can, you can find it usually either on the washing machine or online. Hit me back with those items and I'll help you more precisely. Um, but you do that swoosh test first because if you get the swoosh test back and there's detergent in there, that's your problem. Like that's that's your first thing to look at 
Um, but yeah, hit me back um, with more information and I will help you further. Alrighty. Thank you for joining me and thank you for the great questions. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate, I appreciate you being here and all your great questions. So thank you so much. Um, and I will catch you in the next one. I'm doing one on Facebook on this Friday because this one was supposed to be last Friday, but uh, <laughs> we had some, some, some health issues but, um, with my daughter last week. So that was fun. Um, so I'm still doing one this Friday on Facebook and then the following Friday I will be doing one on YouTube as well about someone had asked me to do on used diapers. So I'll be covering, you know, how to find, I'll cover everything used diapers. Um, so check that one out next week or hit me on Facebook on Friday. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you guys so much. Bye.